We open this episode with a public service announcement from AEW wrestler Evil Uno. Self-isolate for 14 days. Monitor your health. Stay six feet away from others. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. Join Dark Order. And according to Braun Strowman, scrounge fans for money, you lazy wrestlers not wanting to wrestle enough right now. The monster among men should take a look at his own company though, as WWE prepares for total lockdown. The speculated government measure that stopped the spread of Steve Carino, not a new cage-themed pay-per-view, as a number of its wrestlers and talent are choosing to stay home. As we already saw last week with Robert Roode and the Singh brothers both tweeting about not being able to travel into the United States for WWE, as they live in Canada, which shut its borders to all non-essential travel last Thursday, even those within the US are now opting to stay at home for health and safety reasons, rather than travel to WWE's performance performance center in Florida, which has become the promotion's emergency HQ since society started to enter total lockdown. Again, not a pay-per-view, but maybe it should be. It's come out that one of these wrestlers is Paige, who was advertised to appear on Friday's episode of SmackDown, which was broadcast live from the Performance Center in front of no fans. The original plan was to have her for an in-ring segment to announce the six-pack challenge for Bayley's championship at WrestleMania, but WWE changed their minds relatively last minute and had her make the match via Skype, because there's no authority figures anymore, announcing that Bayley will defend against Lacey Evans, Dana Brooke, Tamina, I genuinely forgot she's on the roster, Naomi and Sasha Banks. PW Insider have reported that Paige was actually already set to travel across the country for the taping, but while she was waiting to fly out at the airport, the decision was made to have her stay home and do the angle that way. Paige's sections of the promo were actually recorded in advance from California and edited into the show, so while Bailey and Sasha's parts were live, Paige's were pre-taped. Dave Meltzer has since added why Paige wasn't physically at the SmackDown broadcast, revealing on Wrestling Observer Radio that she was not one of those who was willing to come. When the Steve Carino situation became increasingly serious about two weeks ago, both WWE and AEW told their wrestlers that if they feel in any way uncomfortable about traveling and appearing on shows, they can let management know without that affecting their pushes or positions within the company. Talent are free to stay at home without any consequences, which is a fantastic and understanding approach from both promotions. And according to Meltzer, Paige isn't the only wrestler who has opted to not travel to the performance center, as there have been other people not willing to come and both companies have been really good about it. Oddly though, Paige seems to have made that decision the week before, as she also didn't appear on the 13th of March episode of SmackDown for which she was also advertised. Paige has already explained about missing that episode. Sorry guys, travel made it very hard for me to get there for SmackDown Live with everything that's going on. Completely out of my control. Pensive face, very Sorry, but at least Bailey's keeping you entertained. A pro wrestling sheet corroborated that claim, blaming Paige's absence on travel issues. It speculated it might also be because of the emergency surgery she had to undergo on the 5th of March, presumably putting her immune system more at risk of contracting the virus. And Paige isn't the only WWE star self-isolating. Thank you for your support on Patreon, The Mountain Matthew Dennis. Also missing from the last few weeks of WWE TV has been the real-life SmackDown couple of commentator Corey Graves and wrestler Carmella. Carmella had already implied the two were self-isolating by tweeting, about to go live on my Instagram with Corey Graves and Pancake because, well, quarantine, sleeping face. And now they've confirmed as much on Corey's After the Bell podcast, where he said neither of them have Steve Carino, but they're self-isolating to do their social duty by not spreading any possible infection. And WWE star, Drake Maverick is also in self-isolation, where he's been documenting his quarantine on Twitter, which doubles up as a fascinating insight into the deterioration of one's mind. Day one, confusion, stuck inside watching glam rock music videos. Day two, missing human interaction, dancing with a Chucky doll to Tiffany's I Think We're Alone Now. Day three, watching the climactic scene in Free Willy. Free Willy, ironically, being what I've most experienced during working from home. I mean, the first month, I did it so often I couldn't sit down. 
when does it stop? Day four, watching Police Academy, the greatest comedy franchise of all time. And day five, get an emotional at that scene from Fresh Prince where Will is abandoned by his dad again. Will born in a statue of father and son, but his dad got up and left still. I'm totally fine holding up at home great here, guys. What are you all doing to entertain yourselves in self-isolation? Let me know in the comments because I'll be replying to people from out of quarantine. Back to the whole page stuff though. Reverse segue. I'm not going mad. The six pack challenge wasn't the original SmackDown women's match planned for WrestleMania. Bailey was initially scheduled to face Sasha Banks at WrestleMania in a singles match, but the Wrestling Observer is reporting that was postponed until later in the year because WWE didn't have the time to properly build a feud between the two. That's the feud you decide to postpone because there's not enough time to build it. Instead, the six pack challenge will be the start of the Banks and Bailey split storyline, who have been a heel duo since last September, and then the singles match later when it's not so rushed, where one of the two will turn face, likely Bailey, as she only turned heel in September, whereas Sasha has been a villain for much longer, starting all the way back in August. So, so just a month, actually. And if you go by Twitter teases, someone else might be chucked into the feud to elongate it, with Bailey randomly calling out former WWE star Eva Marie on one of the latter's daily workout posts. Hey, you want another title match? Paige handing them out like candy on Halloween. To which Marie accepted, let's go, baby. Three double high five emojis, which is like seven high fives or, or 38 individual fingers. Quick maths. While Eva is very unlikely to appear in the WrestleMania six pack challenge, as the whole idea right now is to cut down on the amount of people in physical contact, a WWE return later down the line is possible. Marie revealed in a 2018 interview that she had been in talks with WWE about a return, and she would come back just to do a run with Bayley, as she sees the current SmackDown champion as a mentor. We'll know one way or another this week. As for the first time ever, WrestleMania isn't just going to be in front of zero fans, it's not just going to be spread over two nights, it's not just going to be hosted by the Gronk, it'll also be pre-taped in the next few days. To get as much content in the can as possible before travel and non-essential gatherings become even more restricted, total lockdown! WWE have reportedly already filmed the 27th of March and the April 3rd WrestleMania Go Home editions of SmackDown over the weekend, along with NXT content for the next several weeks. In addition to the live Monday Night Raw tonight, next week's Raw for the 30th and the Raw After Mania episode for the 6th of April are also being taped in advance today. And PW Insider is reporting WrestleMania, WWE's biggest show of the year, is going to be filmed on multiple locations with designated skeleton crews this Wednesday and Thursday. One of those locations, in addition to the Performance Center, looks to be NXT's usual home of Full Sail University, as fan Tom Stolp has spotted more than six WWE production trucks in the building's parking lot. WWE is understandably pulling out all the stops to protect the health of their performers and crew working these tapings. The Wrestling Observer has revealed there was only limited crew at last Monday's Raw, consisting of Vince McMahon, Paul Heyman, Kevin Dunn, a few producers, and support people, and training or working at the Performance Center has been stopped, but it will be open if needed for television shoots. Jerry Lawler has since described the measures on his podcast, saying they had everything closed down. There were security guards that met you out there in the parking lot, they came up in an Uber in the parking lot, and they escorted me up to the front door. They stuck a thing in your ear to take your temperature, and mine was 98.6. I went inside, and the whole place had been refurbished or whatever for that particular situation to where you would have wrestlers and all the camera crew people. Lawler added that even with all these precautions and people being kept apart from each other, he was surprised that Vince McMahon was there. Given the WWE chairman's 74 years of age, putting him in one of the most at-risk groups for the virus, with so many people on total lockdown. 
It's rather ironic that Matt Hardy is freer than he's been in years. Hardy debuted on last Wednesday's episode of AEW Dynamite just two weeks after letting his WWE contract expire. AEW then later confirmed that the newly rebroken Matt is all elite, but his contract isn't as exclusive as you might think. Replying to Hardy's tweet about the feedback to his AEW debut, most full of adoration, joy, and support, some unhappy, one fan asked, can we just get one show in the New Japan? That would make my life. To which Hardy replied, revealing a clause in his deal. My contract would allow that. Truth be told, I'd love the opportunity to perform on a New Japan Wrestle Kingdom show in some capacity. This is likely the same clause that allows some of AEW's top wrestlers like Chris Jericho and John Moxley to wrestle for New Japan in Japan, but not on US soil. Apparently this is also the case for Kenny Omega, as he wrestled for his old DDT promotion last year, but there is still tension between him and New Japan over his exit from the company, so that forbidden door remains closed. NXT TakeOver Tampa Bay might not be going ahead, so relive the 10 greatest NXT TakeOvers of all time with Adam Blompier by clicking the video on the right and the brand new episode of No Rolls Bard is up on Parts Fun Known, and it's the go home edition to this Sunday's huge colossal tussle free per view. Click the video below that to watch that now. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.